Hi, good afternoon. I'm Dan Sweet with Hel Helicopter Association International, and welcome to this week's At Work uh, webinar. This has been one that we have been trying to get on our schedule for months. Um, Jim Viola, our president, uh, has interactions with business leaders around the world on a very regular basis, and we feel like these conversations will be of value to people in our industry but trying to get these things scheduled is never easy. And so we do apologize. Today's um, discussion between uh, Jim and Clyde Woolman is a recording. Uh, we had to record it earlier this week. Um, but sometimes that's just the way business is in our industry. So we do uh, appreciate that you're joining us today, and we do hope you understand. So let's go ahead and discuss, uh, see who's going to be coming on with us today. Obviously, uh, Jim Viola, the president and CEO of HAI. And he will be having a conversation with Clyde Woltman, who's the Chief Executive Officer at Leonardo Helicopters USA. Um, Mr. Woltman joined Leonardo in June 2019, uh, initially to lead the US Government Defense Unit and was later named Chief Executive Officer in 2022. Prior to joining Leonardo, uh, Woltman worked for Aerojet Rocketdyne and with Pratt & Whitney. He is also a veteran of the US Marine Corps, retiring at the rank of Colonel. A career Marine and Naval aviator, he served in multiple operational commands and staff assignments. Colonel Woltman flew more than 200 combat missions during Operation Desert Storm, Southern Watch, Iraqi Freedom, and Iraqi Freedom uh, II. Uh, he's worked at uh, the headquarters of the Marine Corps Plans, Policy, and Operations as an exchange pilot with the Spanish Navy, a student at the French, French Joint War College at, and University of Paris Sorbonne, as a NATO staff officer in Naples, Italy, and a Secretary of Defense Corporate Fellow with United Technologies Corporation. Mr. Woltman is a graduate of the University of Southern California with a bachelor's degree, a uh, Bachelor of Science degree in Electrical Engineering, and the University of Paris Sabon with a Master's in Arts degree in Geopolitical Studies. He's married and he and his wife have two sons. So, since today's recording or today's webinar is recorded, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to uh, have any questions and answers at the end of the webinar. We do apologize for that, but it's just the way things had to balance out. Um, we will try to get to back into a session with uh, questions as soon as possible. That said, today's webinar is being recorded. Uh, if you are interested in sharing it, we'll make the link available both on our website and our YouTube channel as quickly as possible. We'll try to get that taken care of tomorrow, but it uh, could be um, as late as Monday before we get that posted. So let me stop sharing this screen and I will go ahead and jump into the video here. Just need to find where my mouse went. There we go. Okay, I'll be back with you at the end of the recording and we'll wrap things up. Hello, I'm James Viola, the President and CEO of Helicopter Association International, and today I have the privilege of introducing Clyde Waltman, who is the CEO of Leonardo Helicopters, the United States. Clyde, welcome. Thanks. Thanks, Jim. Good to be here today. Thank you for the invitation. Absolutely. It's good to talk aviation, and uh, and so we'll kick it right off. We're, we're thinking that our members that are, are signed on here are probably mechanics, helicopter pilots, and uh, helicopter enthusiasts. So. Tell us a little bit about your flying background to, to kind of whet their appetite. Well, thank you. I appreciate that, Jim. Um, <clears throat> my my background, frankly, is is more aligned with the fixed wing world. I, I spent uh, almost 30 years in the Marine Corps flying fixed wings, started out early on in, in the A-4 Skyhawk, did a couple tours there, and then transitioned to the AV-8B. So um, although I'm not a rotor wing guy, I I know how to hover, uh, so I, I flew Harriers for most of my career, mostly on the West Coast. Um, you know, the, I was very, very blessed to be in operational squadrons and uh, uh, flew in in, uh, in normal operation like uh, uh, deployments, uh, both on on the ship and shore base, but also in uh, flown in in combat operations during uh, uh, Desert Shield, Desert Storm, uh, OIF, um, Desert and. Uh, also during the uh, um, denied flight activities in the, in the Middle East. So um, 
quite a bit of that. I uh, was also in kind of interesting part of my career was that I I, I spent some time overseas as well uh, as, a, as a flyer. I was an exchange pilot with the Spanish Navy. So when you look at where I am today with this international company, I'd flown with the Spanish Navy, uh, got some time uh, working in, in Europe uh, as a student at the French War College, University of Paris, and then paid back toward Naples, Italy. So a little bit of uh, international experience there um, and also was a SecDef corporate fellow. So I worked with industry early on while, while active duty. Um, so my background kind of uh, it kind of steered me toward where I am today, but I think what's what's uh, really significant for me in terms of uh, rotary and, and tilt rotor world is uh, as a marine. And many of you know, and, and I know you were this, Jim, that um, you know the uh, in Marine Marine Corps we oftentimes deploy with uh, air combat elements, a an ACE, which is a composite squadron where you mix fixed wing tilt rotor and uh, and helicopters. And uh, while deployed in that environment, I, my, my colleagues oftentimes let me fly their aircraft with them. So I have quite a bit of rotor wing experience at the time. I even got to fly a V-22 uh, years ago. So uh, I do speak uh, and understand and appreciate the world of, uh, of uh, rotor wing and tilt rotor aviation. Yeah, great. Now, that's it's certainly a great international background. And, and that's truly one of the reasons I, I want to have this conversation with you today. You bring all that here and then uh, and out in Philadelphia, you know, Pennsylvania, you guys had some great aircraft there. Did you get to fly any of those recently? I, I have. Um, I, I, I kind of joke, I have a standing mandate. I get to fly or try to fly at least once a month. So I have flown uh, a, you know, a few of our aircraft most recently. I think it was maybe two, two days ago or two weeks ago, I flew uh, one of our TH-119s. So uh, yeah, I, I do get to fly the aircraft occasionally. Um, it's pretty motivating for me and, and for the team to you know, see the boss walk through the flight line and, you know, the part one, you know, part 21, part uh, 145 and a, and a flight suit climbing an aircraft started up and go fly it. So, um, yeah, it's uh, I certainly get an appreciation for the, the fine machines that we make. Yeah, you got a, a great workforce there in Philadelphia. So let's jump into some of the new stuff you're doing. I know that uh, Lee really? just started some construction uh, on a new support center down in Milton, Florida. Tell us about that project. Certainly, uh, that's that's very exciting for us. It's effectively an MRO facility, uh, maintenance repair and overhaul facility, uh, co-located with the Navy. Um, as I think uh, you, you're aware of, and many of our viewers are aware of that uh, uh, the helicopter training takes place in uh, uh, near Milton, Florida, at Naval Air Station Whiting Field, uh, where they have two two fields: North North Field and South Field. Uh, uh, North North Whiting is where they do the primary training. South Whiting is where uh, we do the helicopter training for the student naval aviators. Uh, Santa Rosa County, um, they were looking at uh, in the early 2000, 2003 time from I believe, we're looking at building an aviation park co-located with South Whiting, you know, to just uh, to take advantage of some of the property there and, and, and some interoperability with uh, bringing in potentially uh, commercial aircraft in, into the airfield there. Being aware of that, when we were competing for the, the Navy trainer, um, we were looking at this, uh, we were considering building, a, establishing some sort of a warehouse, some sort of facility co-located with the Navy to, start to deal with the, uh, help, help the Navy, you know, our partners of the Navy deal with the tyranny of distance, make certain that spare parts were available to them right out there next to the airfield. So as um, and so as we looked at this, studied this, and uh, when we were fortunate enough to be selected uh, for the, the, the Navy trainer program, the TH-73 output of 130 aircraft, we decided, okay, now let's, let's go ahead and execute this program. So um, bottom line to cut to the chase, uh, it's a facility. We d decided a facility in the size of 113,000 square foot facility with uh, four large hangar bays, part 145 uh, certification. We've in fact had a small operation at uh, Peter Prince Regional just down the street from Whiting Field where we uh, obtain the certification for Part 145, and that of course gets transferred over to a larger facility. So the uh, what we you know what we intend on having there is a facility that provides component overhaul, transmission repairs, dynamic test bench, uh, full paint booth, tooling, and of course warehousing. Um, we broke ground for the facility about two weeks ago. Very excited uh, in making that happen, um, and. Uh, you know, we're, we're there to, to support not, you know, primary, the primary partner is United States Navy provide uh, support for them, but also an opportunity to provide uh, an MRO facility for 
our large customer base in the region there in, in the south, you know, the southeastern United States and in Central and South America. Um, it's been a, I tell you what, this whole journey has been incredible partnership, uh, wonderful collaboration between uh, Leonardo, you know, Santa Rosa County, uh, the United States Navy, of course, the state of Florida and, uh, and Space Florida. No, oh, that that's, uh, sounds like a great project. It sounds like something that, uh, you know, going well beyond uh, what you're required to do, but trying to make it easy on everybody. And, and so speaking on on that, you know, the uh, and I think it's your partner. I think you refer to uh, your operators as your partners. Is that correct? We do. We do. Right. They are partners. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's a, you know, customer. We'll, we'll get rid of that word. We'll go to partner. So your partnership now with the Navy and the TH-73 Thrasher helicopters, what kind of feedback? I would imagine it's all good, but tell me some specifics of what you're hearing back from from the Navy. Oh, it's it's it, it has been very good. In fact, uh, maybe it's been six about six weeks ago. I had the pleasure of attending the uh, change of command ceremony for HT8. And HT8 is a many of you know is a first uh, one of the one of the three training squadrons there, and they were the first ones to be manned up with a 73. Now they're flying only TH73s for the student naval aviators. And while there, I was, I had the distinct honor, uh, pleasure to fly with uh, one of, uh, you know, flying one of the birds. And uh, my, uh, the, the the instructor pilot was a, uh, is a lieutenant commander. And I believe he was the director of safety and standardization and the high, uh, high, high hours instructor pilot uh, currently at the, at the wing, some 600 hours in the aircraft, which is pretty impressive. And from the time I climbed to that aircraft, um, he just, it was, he couldn't say enough positive things about the aircraft. And you can imagine in my place, you know, I'm a naval aviator. I'm climbing a seat next to him. You know, my company's making these aircraft, delivering them for the Navy. And here's this gentleman going on about all the great aspects about the aircraft, how satisfied he is with it, and how great of a tool, the perfect tool it is. He gets not me, me not, I'm not advertising this. He's telling me this. And now it's a perfect platform, you know, the transition from the, the fixed wing trainer to uh, fleet birds, you know, all the systems management, the equipment, the, 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 the glass cockpit, how the seats are, are, are arranged with the, the jump seat in the back, um, you know, the single engine IFR capability, how it's optimized to, you know, to do uh, auto rotations to, to, to uh, touchdown. In fact, during the one over one hour flight, he took me to every one of the outlying fields in the area wow. and we shot autos to touchdowns at every one of those facilities just to demonstrate the versatility and capability of the aircraft. It was fantastic. So that was that was uh, I think I think that really demonstrated, you know, it showed me the, the motivation and the positive uh, feeling about the aircraft. Additionally, on a side note, my, my son happened to be going through a training in Florida as well. and. Uh, he provides me some intel from, uh -huh. from his, he's not quite in the pipeline yet, but he provides me a lot of intel from his classmates about, uh, you know, they're, they're very excited to fly this machine and uh, really enjoying it. So now that's uh, that's pretty big uh, bragging rights from the sun to say, my dad's making these helicopters, making sure these helicopters are, are meeting the standard. So that good deal. So I, I did get the opportunity to visit the facility, I think before you took over and that was back in the March, 2021. And they were doing a lot of work there. Tell me about the training facility that you have there. Well, that's um, thanks. That's thank, a great question, and, and we're really pleased with the, the training facility. As you as you may recall, we we had always had some training capability there on site and kind of activities in the in the region. But what we did was we consolidated everything on campus. So uh, you know the training pilots, maintainers, air crew. Um, and uh, so we've been doing quite well since we, we stood up. We've been averaging just over a thousand students per year going through the, the program, mostly from the Americas, but it, it's definitely an international crowd. Um, when you walk into the atrium, into the main, main office there, you see the scheduling board and it is routinely full. So we have some 22 technicians and pilot instructors that are working almost around the clock. So they're quite busy. Um, you know, we have uh, the facilities all FA certified. So we have 10, air, 10, 10 uh, FA certified classrooms that are available for use. And certainly we also have with, with the full, full flight, the uh, full motion simulators, um, the FFSs are available. We, we have some, we've accumulated almost 6,000 uh, training hours in those platforms, as well as some 700 training hours and actual equipment. We have, we have a, a 119, and a 139 and, and equipment from other aircraft there, you know, in, in a, in a bay where we actually 
you know, we provide the, the virtual training for the maintainers, but also hands-on. We believe strongly that, you know, hands-on practice is, is certainly vital. So, uh, um, you know, so those are the, some of the numbers we've seen since the inauguration about a year and a half ago. Very, very pleased with the overall progress and status of that, that facility there. Well, that's great. I mean, it, 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 like I said, there's a lot of stuff when I was up there when I walked around. And, and the other thing I saw at the time, and I'm not sure, you know, what the update is now, but let's talk about, uh, you know, the AW609 uh, tilt rotor and its certification process. There's a lot of excitement around that program, and, and uh, I am, I'm very pleased with the progress we've made thus far. Um, I'd like to give you a, a specific date when we expect uh, the FA certification. Um, unfortunately, that's that's not possible. It would not be responsible for me to give you, a, you know, whether it's six months or a year, a year and a half from now. Um, I can tell you we're working very closely with FAA. You know, the FAA has presented us a very clear pathway towards certification. Um, you know, the complexity of this is immense. So we've been, you know, this has been ongoing for a, a number of years. And uh, we've done, you know, acknowledge the fact that this is not just an aircraft, it's an entirely new class of aircraft. It's it's uh, powered lift. So it's not just the aircraft, it's the airspace, it's the training, all aspects of a new type model series, uh, you know, about powered lift. So, um, you know, it's moving along well. Uh, you know, we, we've, uh, you know, the aircraft we've, uh, up until about nine months ago, as, as you're, evaluating an aircraft, you know, you're seeing engineering improvements and we've been doing that, but we effectively about nine months ago, we've locked on the configuration because you want to have a set configuration that the FAA can study and certify. And that's where we are. So we're focused on, you know, we have, we have a set configuration, um, <clears throat> you know, obviously the complexity involved with the FAA. Uh, we're focused now, we are internally are focused on industrialization because we, we have production birds. In fact, the first production aircraft flew in October of 22. Uh, so, we have, you know, others that are being built and uh, again, focusing on industrializing those. And uh, in the meantime, we also have our, our folks, our sales teams, our marketing people are looking at, you know, what's, what's, the, what's, the, what's the market look like? And, and we're, see, we're seeing excellent, you know, obviously excellent feedback from, from globally. Um, <clears throat> we've, uh, you know, internally, while well, this is, well, this is happening, you know, we are, uh, also developing our full flight simulator, you know, the training modules and all that for, for the aircraft. So once it gets certified, we can go in a high gear and start training people on the aircraft maintainers and, and, and uh, air crew. Um, and, uh, you know, start, you know, and also being able to support the aircraft for our customers. Uh, you may, uh, you may recall, uh, recall that uh, we signed a, a new order back in, uh, in 2020, well, early this year, um, for a European passenger transport uh, operator for four units. And also we have a, another order from Westar in Malaysia. So uh, bottom line, <clears throat> over the next couple of years, we the 609s are part of our master production plan. So we we have customers right now, today and now. So it's a, it's a very exciting place for us. Um, as we all know, collectively on the military side, you know, the V-22 has shown the capabilities and the, you know, the, the value of, of, of tilt rotor platforms and uh, so that's 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 a given. What was also very very encouraging for us is a recent uh, decision by the United States Army to select the V-280, the Bell V-280, as a, you know, in that mission, um, and uh, certainly validates the value of, of tilt rotor technologies. So the 609, you know, it's a great product in itself. It's a technology enabler. It's a capability enabler, and uh, we're already looking at you know the next generation of of tilt rotors for for our company. Yeah, no, that's very are... exciting time. Yeah, those two words are technology and the capability. Uh, that's one of the things that I think people don't truly understand um, what vertical aviation brings. And it brings, you know, and the intent that, you know, behind the scenes, folks like, you know, Leonardo and other manufacturers, it's what are the good things that vertical aviation can do for society? How do you fill those gaps out there between airplanes and helicopters? You know, the speed, the range. Uh, not needing all the infrastructure. So really applaud to all the good work that you're doing. And I know 609 has been a long time coming, but uh, like, as you're telling me now, the, you know, the appetite is out there, the orders are there. Uh, soon we can, and you know, all the help, hopefully I'm, I'm providing some help as an association, as well as Gamma and others to try to get you across that finish line. So thanks for working Perfect. with us and thanks for the patience on that. So the other the other aircraft certification wise, how about the, the AW09? Uh, what's it, how's that going?
Thanks, Jim. You know, you know, bottom line with with AWO nine, you know, we we're focused on on bringing a product to market that meets the the expectations of the market. Um, if you recall, we procured uh, a copter a couple of years ago, and uh, you know, we're uh, we've upgraded that 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 vehicle and uh, in 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 the air vehicle as well as the the propulsion systems in it, and uh, we we believe that we have a very sound strategy toward. Uh, um, bringing that product to, uh, to development and industrialization, addressing supply chain management and support, and uh, we are we're confident that we're on the right path towards certification through, A through AASA. Um, as we know, once uh, once we achieve uh, that certification through reciprocity with the FAA, we'll see that aircraft they're looking at building it here, potentially in the U.S. and uh, seeking out the you know the the, the market in the U.S. as well. Um, back in um, <clears throat> Hello Expo 2023, we announced uh, uh, preliminary sales contracts for some uh, over 50 units in, in, uh, globally. So that that's genuinely exciting as well. So uh, that shows in, in both actually Southeast Asia and in Brazil. So uh, we're we're going in the right direction. I think bottom line, we're satisfied with the progress that we're we're, we're making, and we're striving to deliver that aircraft as soon as possible to the market. No, that's uh, great to hear again that the the appetite is out there and that uh, society is looking forward to some of these um, new capabilities. And so, you know, as we've been trying to build out of these new capabilities and be able to support custom, um, partnerships and and uh, society, what are your you know what's the future hold for Leonardo as as everybody starts talking about advanced air mobility? Well, that's an interesting one, uh, Jim. Um, our, our our division has recently registered some patents for a range of uh, technological solutions and architectures that some of which may be relevant to advanced air mobility applications. Um, you know, we're looking, uh, we're assessing potential business models, what that would look like in in that area. Uh, it, that considering, you know, that not only technology itself. Uh, but also some of the applicable uh, regulations, infrastructure, uh, services, social acceptance, uh, sustainment, um, and market opportunities. So it's something that we're, we're certainly interested in, we're pursuing, um, we're continuing to study, uh, we at Leonardo are continuing to study uh, the possibilities of air, advanced air mobility very, very closely, including um, a, an electrical hybrid propulsion um, uh, solution, which I think is, is certain, certainly very, very, vi very viable, um, and that's that also comes, you know, as part of a, a broader technological roadmap that we have across not only the division but across the group that leverages our, our established and solid, widely recognized expertise and in integrated capabilities and in vertical takeoff and land uh, platforms. So it's a uh, it's certainly something that's very interesting to us. I can't give you a very specific uh, roadmap today, but uh, I think that is certainly the future. Yeah, no, I think, uh, like I said, exciting times right now. Um, you know, as you transition from helicopter to the 609 to the 09, uh, future capabilities with AM aircraft out there and mainly the propulsion. Um, so I, I, it's good to see Leonardo working on the single engine IFR stuff. You know, that was a that was certain took a while to, to get there back to the, the safety of single engine operations. But with all that, you know, and you talked about a little bit earlier today when you walk the floor, tell me about what you're doing to address workforce development uh, here and making sure that you have that workforce to do all this work. Well, um, it's certainly a, a priority for all CEOs, workforce development. You know, one of the, you know, for us, for me, it's a, it's a multi-axis approach. Um, you know, you want to obviously build build your workforce, build your your teammates, um, and at the same time incentivize them and keep them you know keep in, keep them motivated and keep them on the team. Uh, you know, we're looking at uh, multiple activities that not only bring on board uh, new new blood people that have never been in aviation before, but also um, experienced uh, technicians and engineers and the like. So it's been. Uh, it's been it's been a very interesting uh, year for me in terms of uh, initiatives. Um, the focus has been on, you know, we we're recruiting quite a bit across uh, multiple areas, including uh, the military communities. You know, we've had some number of partnerships with organizations such as uh, Next Stop, which helps transitioning military people. So we're bringing a lot of experience in that area. 
Um, we've been recently formulated a uh, sort of a new junior uh, technician program in, in a partnership with uh, the Aviation Institute of Maintenance just down the street from us, where they train uh, uh, young young people toward toward their AMPs, their air, airframes and power plants uh, certifications. So it's a, that effectively is a, a cohort of students that we receive bringing in training and in, in our aircraft. And if they complete the, appropriately the, the program and demonstrate the skills and, and attitude, uh, we can bring them on as permanent employees. So we, we have this partnership with them. Uh, we're also exploring other opportunities quite aggressively with educational institutions such as the, the Community College of, of Philadelphia and uh, in Penn State University and other higher uh, um, institutions of learning to, uh, to to bring in reinforce our talent pipeline. So uh, you know those are those are very meaningful um, activities. Uh, we we also have internally uh, a number of uh, training programs courses that are available to our workforce so using examples like uh, commercial tr tools like uh, Coursera where you, we develop our, our teammates. And also um, our own in, um, uh, internal training. We we leverage our our uh, training academy for for training new people, and also currency proficiency training for uh, mechanics technicians uh, that are that have been been with the company for for years. We've uh, created a scholarship program um, and tuition assistance or tuition reimbursement for toward AMP and under undergraduate training. So there's you know we're hitting all. All cylinders. We're bringing on new people, experienced people, and motivating and ensuring we have succession planning, succession training to keep people on, on staff. Um, I have a philosophy that I've established, um, and that is to grow our own. So we build build this team and continue to grow our own, and that that's really key here. Because that once you're a part of the team, you want to feel that you're a valued part of the team, and you have a future with the company. So that's a genuinely an exciting exciting time time for us as well. Yeah, no, thanks for that. And that's a lot of good things that are out there on workforce development. Uh, as I travel around and I talk to the operator members out there, that's one of the key things is that not only pilots, but mechanics as well. And then how do we get a roadmap from uh, getting number one, getting someone interested, and then getting them to the final selection like your, you know, things that you're offering them, uh, Leonardo, to, to stay on board and become a teammate with you guys. So I appreciate the scholarships that you do support. Um, there certainly, you know, I've heard of people going to the transition that uh, that you offered um, for for some of the scholarships. So keep up the great work on uh, on bringing more folks into the uh, vertical aviation arena. So we talked about people. Now the next connection is the supply chain. I know that everybody's struggling on the supply chain as well. Have you done anything, uh, or how are you dealing with, and what have you done to to foster it? Well, like everything, there, there are multiple actions that need to be have to take place. A number of initiatives. Uh, you know, we've made significant investments with our digital warehouse management tool that uh, you know makes sure that we can you know ensure better end-to-end -end, uh, visibility and predictability um, uh, with long lead times. Additionally, uh, we've uh, traditionally we 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 will purchase in advance uh, parts uh, components. Uh, up to 12 months in advance, and uh, what we've done is uh, to to deal with the, some of the challenges with, with, with the supply chain. Is we've added another 12 uh, another 12 months to that. So you will see we will advance procure parts, you know, 24 months, two years prior to the the, the aircraft to be built or when the, when the parts are needed. So uh, bottom line, longer lead times. That's that's a key key action that we're that we're engaged in. The other piece is really identifying critical items, you know, the, and, you know, we all know what those can be. So we're, we're looking at uh, how do we address the critical items, long lead times on, on those, and also second second sources and more uh, to make certain that we don't have any holes uh, across the spectrum. And uh, also adding more localized repair capabilities uh, throughout our markets globally, as as well as, you know, expanding the service centers uh, for to meet the needs of our, 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 our partners. Um, or in terms of uh, <clears throat> raw material stock, we've simply increased that, pursuing that, making certain that we have a consistent stock there. And uh, overall, we've spent uh, a tremendous amount of time and efforts with our with our suppliers to make certain that that we we understand their shortfalls, their challenges, and identifying them, getting their feedback, and you know, they are partners with us, and ensuring that uh, 
we acknowledge those and uh, we've maintained we established and maintained very strong relationships across all of our our, our partners uh, globally and uh, we're in the concern that we're all fully aligned uh, to meet our, our, our priorities together. So it's uh, it's it's not it is absolutely not uh, trivial and it's uh, you know it's got our full attention. So yeah, so, now, so again, you know, really uh, it sounds like you're stepping up for it and, and, you know, a lot of people, you know, we're coming out of the pandemic and stuff, but they are really exciting times now with a lot of things really going in the right direction uh, and, and you know, a lot of lessons learned for how not to get um, some of the things with the supply chain, workforce development, getting folks in industry, uh, interested and, uh, you know, the whole uh, AAM coming on board and the different propulsion systems. I mean, very exciting. I, I mean, I'm excited as a pilot. I know the mechanics are, are uh, and the engineers, you know, depending on where you are in the world, are excited about getting their hands on some of this new technology, uh, the battery, the hydrogen. Uh, so just very exciting times. It'd be hard to to try to point, you know, what I'm most excited in. I don't know, is there something that you're most excited in or something 15 years down the road? Oh my goodness! Well, for me, what uh, what's exciting for me, uh, obviously, everything we talked about here is you know they're all state of the art, new opportunities um, and and customers and capabilities. But what is exciting for me is is really where, where my where my company's going. You know, we're looking. I know my my colleagues on the other side of the Atlantic, our leadership team, not only in Rome but with a division. Uh, we're looking across the Atlantic as in the, the Americas and the U.S. as as the next great market. And uh, we've had some superb uh, performance and, and great wins here in the recent years. And, uh, you know, I think uh, it is to me, it's it's an, almost an, a clean slate. And uh, we have very aggressive, uh, open minded, uh, great leaders and techni technical people uh, across the division and uh, looking at the, you know, looking at the U.S. and I think we are in an inflection point in that regard. And uh, I, I can tell you how, how motivating it is on a daily basis to know we're, we're part of that. So uh, yeah, it's uh, I see I see just just great things uh, coming out of the company here in our in our growth here in the U.S. Oh, well, thanks. I mean, Leonardo is certainly one of the the great companies out there. And you know, I just want to take a couple minutes to talk about HII. I mean, we we've, we've been around seventy five years. We're celebrate our seventy fifth year in December. And our, you know, our task is to, you know, bring the the industry together so that everybody can succeed, you know. And then I like to say, you know, we've got to have safety first before prosperity. But uh, we're doing a lot of good things in the safety area. We, you know, we've got the vertical aviation safety team that uh, Leonardo is a uh, members of, of course, and uh, all the good work safety wise that's going on with the uh, with that. And uh, you know. Madrid, we're going to be in Madrid with European Rotors at the end of November. Uh, and you talked, you had some experience yourself in Spain. And then we're going to have the Heli Expo, which will be the last week in February. And this year it's going to be in Anaheim. And again, it's all about, as you you mentioned, I think two of the uh, Heli Expos that uh, you made great announcements at. Is there anything that uh, you want to whisper that's going to happen at the end of February? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'd love to, but uh, I, I would be I would be scolded from my my colleagues in Italy. No, I, uh, I I look forward to um, all these events, um, and it's it's a very it, it's it's those are enjoyable across the board. Just working, you know, with you and the team and and our you know our our industry teammates. I mean, uh, it's it's a you know I I enjoy being in that environment. You know, with our competitors and partners, and at the same time, so. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I think the overall market, uh, the technologies are going, you know, in the right direction. I think uh, I, I see growth across the the industry, and uh, it's it's just uh, I'm genuinely you know proud to be part of that that uh, um, that team, well, that international team. Now, very excited to uh, to have uh, your membership, all the support that you do for the association to keep us trying to, you know, make sure that uh, we can do advocacy work to. You know, number one, like we talked, you know, the 609, keep keep the pressure on there to get that finished. Uh, so, so much work has gotten into it. I know uh, all your employees will they'll probably be, will probably hear it from Philadelphia here in D.C. when you get uh, get that approval from the cheers. But, there, there'll uh, be <laughs> there'll be a lot of cheers. Believe me, yeah. I'm looking forward to that day. 
So any any last minute things you want to talk about here before we wrap things up? Well, Jim, uh, I just I just really appreciate the time here, you know, and uh, like I said, I believe strongly that you know, the, the company Leonardo uh, Helicopters, we're at an inflection point here internationally. Uh, I appreciate that the timing is great. You know, uh, you know, you look at the product line where, you know, the challenges we have internationally and the partnerships we have, uh, this is just, it's, I, it's just a real honor to be here with you and you know, we'll share some of that with you and, and the rest of the team, the global team. Yeah. And I'd like, to, yeah, no, I appreciate it. I'd like to take the opportunity for those watching right now, you know, if there's anything that uh, you want to bring to myself or Clyde's attention, you know, I certainly, you know, my Viola flight reports, the VFRs, they dropped me a note at president at rotor.org. Uh, I I want to know what's going on. I want like Clyde was talking about walks out and you know walks through the the factory so he can see what's going on. I I do that traveling as well, and I do look forward to getting to Philadelphia and and maybe even flying with you, Clyde. So I look forward to that. Fun on it. Yeah, I appreciate your time today, and uh, we'll go ahead and close things up. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Jim. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that uh, as much as I did. Um, it's always exciting to hear what companies are, are doing in within our industry and an organization like Leonardo that has such a, an illustrious history and such a, a positive outlook on the future. Um, it's always great to hear what's going on with them. Uh, just get to, uh, just kind of an update from uh, directly from the head of Leonardo USA. I want to appreciate, uh, extend my appreciation to Clyde Waltman and his team for uh, finally being able to work this out and being able to make this presentation. So now let me uh, bring up and we'll get things wrapped up here fairly quickly today. Uh, don't always have a CEO to CEO, but right now the next webinar we do have coming up is in uh, September, September 14th, and that's going to be learning from military accidents. Um, the government accounting office earlier this year, GAO, um, produced a study on National Guard uh, aircraft accidents. And we're going to have uh, the people who assembled that report on to discuss what can the commercial industry learn from these military accidents? What, what the, uh, the GAO came up with a list of recommendations and how can those uh, recommendations be applied to the commercial industry? Um, don't have firm dates yet, but we've got a couple of other topics that we know are coming up. Thought I'd throw a couple of them out. Uh, we're going to be talking to, uh, doing a presentation on rate rotor wake turbulence. And coming up in October, I believe that uh, may be fairly firm. Uh, we're going to be getting an update uh, on the NASA Mars helicopter directly from uh, Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena. Um, one of the things that we've asked them to focus on is they only plan for five missions, and I think right now they're at 55 missions. And so what have they learned uh, about the aircraft, um, about their design, about the components of it that would be applicable to the commercial industry here uh, on Earth? I, I think that's going to be an exciting one. HAI does like to share information. Our webinars are one of the methods we use. Another method we use is Rotor Daily. Uh, that's a daily news aggregator that comes out every business day here in the U.S. Uh, we distribute it around the world. We've gone through Google and all the other uh, news sources we know to find the top 10 to 15 to 20 stories each day that we feel that you should know about. And by us doing it, it saves you a ton of time. It's a great time to sit down during lunch or uh, during a break go through the headlines, click on the stories that uh, are of interest to you. We can guarantee you that you're going to find something in there that uh, you'll, will appeal to you. It's free. All you got to do is go to rotor.org slash subscribe, and you can subscribe to that. We'll start sending it to your email box fairly quickly. Uh, Rotor Magazine is an award-winning quarterly publication that we also produce. The articles are much more in-depth. They're original content. Um, and it's, it's just a great publication. It's also free if you live here in the US. And if you are international, uh, there's just a very low cost. And all you have to do, again, go to rotor.org slash subscribe and you subscribe to the magazine as well, one or both. Um, look forward to seeing those in my mailbox every time. Uh, do appreciate your feedback. We'd love to know more about what uh, you liked or didn't like about our webinars. So I'm trying to get a, uh, 
uh, questionnaire out soon. Jim mentioned this during his part of the recording. Um, he wants to hear what you think about HAI and what we're doing for the industry. Um, please use the president at rotor.org email address there. Uh, send him your challenges. Send him uh, the things that are bothering you, things that are keeping you up at night in the industry, things that you think HAI might be able to help you with. We have a strong regulatory team. We have a strong legislative team to uh, both help with advocacy on your behalf. Um, let us know what we can do to help you out. And that does wrap us up for this week. We do appreciate that you took time out of your schedule to join us. Uh, we'll be joining you again here in a couple of weeks and uh, look forward to seeing you. Until then, fly, please fly safe and be safe.